Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. Are the seven laws of Noah biblical? And are we to follow them as believers in Yeshua, in Jesus? We're going to examine the scriptures today and find out. These seven laws of Noah are often referred to as the Noahite laws. There are various teachings out there and opinions concerning this topic. And we're often asked, is this concept of Noahite laws relevant to believers today? But before we unpack that question and examine the scriptures, here's a quick summary of the Noahite laws. What are they? The Word of God, the Torah, God's instruction, is given only to Jewish people. But there are seven laws of Noah that apply to the Gentiles. This is not a biblical concept. This is a rabbinic concept. So they teach that there are seven universal laws that God gave to all mankind, and these are called the seven laws of Noah, what they call the universal commandments, according to rabbinic Jewish tradition, the Noah laws. It's very important to note that these seven laws of Noah are referenced in the Jewish Talmud. They are not referenced in the Word of God, and they are not from the Word of God what the rabbis call the seven precepts, the social laws, to refrain from blasphemy, adultery, bloodshed, robbery, and eating flesh cut from a living animal. The rabbis teach that the non-Jews who observe these laws are referred to as Noahites. And therefore, if they're Noahites and they observe the seven laws of Noah, they have a right to eternal life. Non-Jews who observe the seven laws that apply to the descendants of Noah, namely all peoples, according to rabbinic authorities, not according to the Word of God. These include adultery and incense, bloodshed, blasphemy, robbery, social injustice, and the eating of the flesh of a limb cut from a living animal. This teaching comes from the Rambam, the Talmud, not from the written Word of God. Rambam taught that on the basis of they believe and inherit the blessings of the Noahite laws, the seven laws of Noah, they have the right to eternal life. This is found in the Mishnah and in the Talmud. It is not found in the written word of God. Obviously, this doctrine is not compatible with the teaching of Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, God. John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whether Jew or Gentile, no one comes to the Father only except through Yeshua the Messiah. There is one gospel. There is one God, Yeshua. There is one truth. Even the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. It's always been about one. The one new man, Ephesians 2.15. John chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. Salvation comes by faith in Messiah Yeshua, not by observance of any commandments written by rabbis. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And we know that the Lord is Jesus Yeshua. So as we can see, there's nothing in the scriptures about the seven laws of Noah. That comes direct from the Talmud, not from the written word of God. As believers in Yeshua, in Jesus, and God, we are not to follow the rabbis. We are not to follow Judaism. We are not to follow man tradition. We are to follow only the Word of God in context. Yes, we are to evangelize the Jewish people. We are to love the Jewish people. We are to share the gospel, but we are not to follow the Jewish people. We are to love the nations. We are to preach the gospel to the nations, but we are not to follow rabbinic tradition in order to preach the gospel. For if we teach that the seven laws of Noah are biblical, then we're loving people to hell. And we cannot love people over righteousness. The truth has to be preached. All who believe that Yeshua, Jesus, is God, that he rose from the dead on the third day, that he conquered death, if you repent and believe and call on him as Lord and Savior of your life, you'll have eternal life. That is for Jews and for Gentiles, one in Messiah Yeshua, one in Yerushalayim HaChadashah, the new Jerusalem, one 
as the bride of Yeshua the Messiah. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Yeshua is not seeking people to worship the Talmud. He's not seeking people to worship the rabbis. He's not seeking people to add to the Word of God. He's seeking those to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And the truth can only do one thing, set you free. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is a gift from God. So we can see that everything that the seven laws of Noah teach about salvation is contrary to the Word of God. As believers in Yeshua, in Jesus, and God, we understand that faith in Messiah Yeshua and obedience leads to salvation. Then there is the sanctification process, to die in Messiah Yeshua daily, to repent, to be a follower of Jesus Yeshua, to become Yeshua-like, Christ-like, the fruit of the believer in obedience to the Word of God. The seven laws of Noah teach the exact opposite. That works is what gives the nation salvation. This is an exact opposite of the written Word of God. And this is very problematic. It should not come as a surprise, as Judaism rejects Messiah Yeshua as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So obviously, we're going to differ with mainstream Judaism. It's always important to realize there are three main important basic keys when we study Scripture. Number one, everything points to Messiah Yeshua from Genesis to Revelation. Psalms chapter 40, verse 7. Then I said, Here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. And everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. It's one book. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. But test everything that is said. Hold on what is good. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I give you. And the words for commandments there is the word Torah, and the word Torah does not mean man religion, it means God's instruction. From Genesis to Revelation. Hidgalut, Revelation, chapter 22, verse 19. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in the scroll. The book of Hidgalut, Revelation, is not in chronological order. It shows us things that were, things that are, and things are going to come to pass. So when it says, do not add or take off from the scroll of this prophecy, it speaks about things that were, things that are, and things are to come to pass. From Genesis to Revelation. Remember the Bible verse says, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book. The scroll is Yeshua. He is the Word of God. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word of God is clear. If believers are following or teaching the seven laws of Noah, and they're not in the written Word of God, it is against the Word of God. And therefore, it is even dangerous. It really doesn't matter what I say. It really doesn't matter what the rabbi says. It matters only what the Word of God says, Jesus Yeshua. That's why the Bible verse says, test everything. It may be more popular to follow the seven laws of Noah, but popularity is not what's going to bring you to the kingdom. What's going to bring you to the kingdom is believing Messiah Yeshua, trusting in Him, and following His Word. It's not about us. It's all about Yeshua, Jesus. Our primary concern as believers in Yeshua shouldn't be what Jewish or Christian tradition teaches, but what the Scriptures say in context. God's heart is that everyone comes into relationship with Him through Messiah Yeshua. Jew and the nations, one in Messiah Yeshua. That is God's heart. 
There is no word of God for Gentiles and word of God for Jews. There's one word of God for everyone, one Messiah for everyone, one God for everyone, one way to heaven for everyone, one new Jerusalem for everyone. This is the biblical concept all through the Bible. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 10. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord, your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or your female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. So we can see the foreigner here represents to the nations. We already see the concept of the one new man right here in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 10. And keeping the Sabbath according to the word of God, not according to the rabbis, is that we rest on the Sabbath day if we can. Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. We can worship the Lord on the Sabbath. We can worship the Lord on a Sunday. We can worship the Lord on a Monday. It's not about the day. It's about the spirit. The commandment is to rest on the Sabbath. But we can see right here that the concept that there are two set of rules, one for Jews and one for the Gentiles, is a non-biblical concept. There is one Bible for all people. The nations get grafted into the olive tree, Romans eleven seventeen, and thus all the blessings of Israel apply to them. Judaism does not believe in Messiah Yeshua, and therefore they have invented the Talmud and the seven laws of Noah. As we can see, there's one word of God and one instruction for all who call on the name of Yeshua, Jesus. So we can see that the Ten Commandments were given not just to the Jews, but to all under the blood of Yeshua, Jesus. And this is the biblical concept all through the Bible. Numbers chapter 9, verse 14. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in according with all its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native born. So we can see all through the Bible that it's always the concept of the one new man and there is no seven laws of Noah. Yeshua, Jesus is the Passover lamb. John 1.29, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Matching exactly Numbers chapter nine, verse 14. That concept is all through the Bible, unleavened bread. Exodus chapter 12, verse 19. For seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. And we know that in the Bible, leaven represents sin. Paul speaks about it as well. A little leaven spoils the whole lump. Only Yeshua is without leaven. What it's referring to is to taking out the sin out of our life, and that can only be done through Messiah Yeshua, Jesus. We can see that there's no one set of word for Jews and one set of word for the nations, the exact opposite of what the seven laws of Noah teach. But there is one gospel, one message for both Jews and the native who's grafted into spiritually Israel. As believers in Yeshua, we must seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and we must test everything. When it says also in Exodus, he'll be cut off from the congregation of Israel, it's speaking about salvation. The wages of sin is death. Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 14. The feast will be a happy time of celebrating with your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites, the foreigners, the orphans, the widows from your towns. Notice it says here the foreigners, that is the nations. We can keep on going on and on and on. That is the biblical concept from Genesis to Revelation. There is no one set of word of God for Jews, one set for the nations. It's all one word for all under the blood of Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah. Ultimately, we all want to reach the final tabernacle. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will tabernacle with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. The concept of the Noahat laws, the seven laws of Noah, 
is not biblical. It comes from the Talmud. It comes from the rabbis. And it is a dangerous teaching. God's word is clear. Numbers chapter 15, verse 16. The same laws, the same Torah, it says in Hebrew. Torah just means God's instructions and regulations will apply both to you and to the foreigner residing among you. So we can see according to the word of God, there is one word of God for nations and for Jews. The concept of the one new man, what Paul spoke about in Ephesians chapter two, verse 15. God did not give his word exclusively to the Jews. He gave it to everyone who follow his word. Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus Yeshua as Lord and Savior. Everyone that's born again. Brothers and sisters, the seven laws of Noah, the Noahide laws, have penetrated into the believer's congregation for one purpose and one purpose only. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The seven laws of Noah have been deceiving the very elect. It's time that the true gospel be preached. It's time that we test everything. It's time that we take only the Wohakodesh, the Holy Spirit, as the authority. Instead of following the rabbis, instead of following the Talmud, it's time we preach to the rabbis. We bring them to faith in Messiah Yeshua, and we be a light in the dark world. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. Greater is he in us than the one in the world. As we prepare ourselves for Yeshua's second coming as the bride, it's going to get more and more difficult not to follow a popular message, but to follow the truth. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. This calls for patience and endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commandments, his word, and remain faithful to Jesus Yeshua. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we can see here in number one, it's for all nations, so the concept of seven laws of Noah doesn't exist. What exists is only the Word of God. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we know that Yeshua is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. And then Yeshua says in verse 20, And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Not everything the rabbis commanded you. Not everything a prophet commanded you. Not everything man tradition commanded you, everything Jesus, Yeshua commanded you. He is the word of God. He is the authority. He is the king of kings, Lord of lords, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The word in Hebrew for everything is hakol. And hakol means everything. It doesn't mean you take one verse here and one verse there and delete it and add to the word of God and add seven laws and take out four laws. It means everything. In conclusion, those who suggest that modern concept of the Noah laws should have relevance to us as believers are basing their views on modern rabbinic tradition that was invented many centuries ago by the rabbis, not by God and not in the word of God, the Talmud. The scriptures teach against adding or subtracting from the word of God. Our final authority is the scriptures, not man-centered doctrine. We are not to follow the rabbis. We are not to follow tradition. We are to follow only Jesus, only Yeshua. He is the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1, verse 14. In Hebrew, and the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. Only Jesus, only Yeshua is the authority, not the rabbis. It doesn't matter what the rabbis say. It matters only what Jesus Yeshua said. He's God and he's the Messiah. And only through him do we have salvation. If you believe that he died on the tree on the cross for your sins, he rose on the third day. And by his blood, you have full redemption of sins. Then you are a child of the living God. You have eternal life 
through Messiah Yeshua. And only his word in context is what matters. Let's continue to love the Jewish people, to love the nations, but to preach the truth. The seven laws of Noah, or the Noahide laws, are not scriptural and they're not biblical. I hope this teaching has blessed you and shed some light over this controversial subject. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Preach the gospel, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem, and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, sending you blessings from Jerusalem, Israel, in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the line of the tribe of Judah, Al Yehuda, Jesus Yeshua, Amen. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.